eight cameras surround. And uh, these are fairly high definition cameras and we have 36 frames a second. And you can see that basically you can actually understand a lot about this environment from this input. It's, it's extremely information rich, rich. You're getting a huge amount of constraints, 8 million bits roughly of constraints per second on the state of the surroundings. And so it's incredibly information rich compared to any other sensor you may want to have in a car. And so this is the one that we're doubling down on because this is ultimately where all the difficult um, sort of scene interpretation challenges not with properly. So here's what it took. Um, so the first component that you need is an incredibly good data set. So and when I talk about a good data set, I believe it has to have three properties that are critical. It has to be large in millions of examples. It needs to be clean. So in this case, we have to have a very clean uh, source of depth, velocity, and acceleration for all these cars. And it must be diverse. So we're not just talking about a single, you know, driving clip of going forward on a highway. We really have to get into the edge cases and mine all the difficult scenarios. And I'm going to Success show you some guaranteed. And so let me show you some examples of that. So how are we gonna, so first of all, how are we going to achieve this data set? So of course we need uh, to collect training data. Uh, the typical approach might be to use humans to annotate uh, cars around us in three dimensions. Um, what we found actually works really well is an auto labeling approach. So it's not pure humans, just like annotating cars. It's, it's an offline tracker as we call it. And it's an auto labeling process for uh, collecting data at the scale that is necessary. Uh, so we need, again, millions of hard examples. So this is where the scale comes from, is that it's not labeled purely by humans, although humans are involved, it's labeled automatically. So here's an example of some automatic labels we were able to derive for cars on the highway. And the way you do this is because you are offline and you are trying to just annotate a clip, you have a large number of benefits that you don't typically have if you're at test time under strict latency requirements uh, in the car or the collection of examples. So you can now, as we were working on this over a duration of, I want to say, of roughly four months of really just focusing a lot of the team on this problem of achieving really good depth, velocity, and acceleration, we've ended up developing 221 triggers uh, manually uh, that we were using to source data from our customer fleet. And this is just an example, um, some examples of the 221 triggers that were used to collect all of these uh, diverse scenarios. So for example, we have um, shadow mode where we deploy a neural network that is pretty good at predicting depth and velocity. And what we do is we run it silently in the cars of our customers, uh, but it's not actually connected to control. What's driving is the legacy stack. But we're, we're, we're basically running the new measurements of depth and velocity. And we're, for example, looking at whether or not they agree or disagree with the legacy stack or with the radar. We're looking for other sources of jank, like for example, if there's bombing box jitter, detection jitter, the main and the narrow camera disagree. Um, we predict that there's a harshly decelerating object, but the person seems to not mind. So in total, we've done seven rounds of shadow mode for this release. Um, we've accumulated 1 million extremely hard diverse clips. Uh, and these are videos. So these are, you should roughly think about say 10 second clips, 36 FPS, something like that. In total, we have about 6 billion objects labeled cleanly for depth and velocity. And this takes up roughly 1.5 petabytes. So, so we have a neural network architecture, we have a data set. Now, training these neural networks, like I mentioned, this is a 1.5 petabyte data set, requires a huge amount of compute. So I wanted to briefly uh, give a plug to this insane supercomputer that we are building and using now. Um, and, uh, you know, for us, computer vision is the bread and butter of what we do and what enables the autopilot. And uh, for that to work really well, you need massive data set. We get that from the fleet, but you also need to train massive neural nets and experiment a lot. So we've invested a lot into the compute. In this case, we have here a data center. Uh, we have a cluster that we're just building that is 720 nodes of 8x, 8100s of the 80 gigabyte version. So this is a massive supercomputer. I actually believe that in terms of flops, this is roughly uh, number five supercomputer uh, in the world. So it's actually a fairly significant uh, computer here. So uh, this is a pretty incredible supercomputer. Um, and uh, so this is a GPU cluster. Uh, next up, we're really hoping that uh, uh, we're currently working on Project Dojo, uh, which will take this to next level. Uh, but I'm not ready to sort of reveal any more details about that at this point. The thing I wanted to briefly talk about is um, I wanted to also uh, mention briefly that um, this effort basically is incredibly vertically integrated uh, in the AI team. So as I showed you, we own the vehicle and the sensing and we source our own data and we annotate our own data and we train our on-prem cluster. And then we deploy all of the neural networks that we train on our in-house developed chip. So we have the FSD computer uh, here uh, that has two SOCs, FSD chips here, and they have our own custom NPU neuroprocessing unit here at roughly 36 times each. 
And uh, so these chips are specifically designed for the neural networks that we want to run for FSD applications. And so everything is very vertical integrated in a team. And I think that's pretty incredible because um, you get to really uh, co-design and engineer at all the layers of that stack. And uh, there's no third party that is holding you back. You're fully in charge of your own destiny, which I think is incredibly unique and very exciting.